Welcome to this homeschool math curriculum comparison with Charlotte Mason Math versus Unschool Math. Hi, I'm Gloria Brooks, founder of Nature Glows eScience, offering online math and science courses for homeschool kids ages 8 to 18. I'm also a relaxed homeschool and unschool parent coach. Welcome. Let's get started. But before we do, go ahead and hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more homeschool math and science goodness. So here we have Charlotte Marie Shaw Mason, who lived from 1842 to 1923 and is the founder of the Charlotte Mason Math Approach, along with the other academics subject, subjects as well, such as literature, history, et cetera. Today, I'll be comparing the Charlotte Mason Math methods with unschool math. Now, who was the modern day founder or rather reintroducer of the unschool method and philosophy. It was John Holt, of course, who lived from 1923 to 18, uh, 1985. So interestingly, John Holt was born the same year as Charlotte's passing. Let's dive in, dive in now, comparing both of these great thinkers' approach to mathematics education for children. Charlotte Mason's math lessons are, number one, oral with the child, number two, the child answering small or short word problems within their understanding. Now, I'll show you a real curriculum example of that shortly. Number three, children work out word problems using common everyday objects found around the house. That's the main framework that Charlotte used throughout all of the grades for math. Now, unschooling, on the other hand, unschooling math is number one, child self-directed, Number two, the child seeks to learn math directly or indirectly. Number three, parents set up a rich learning home environment and are also there to answer questions or help the child when the child asks for help or assistance or has questions. So that's, you know, quite a shift there uh, between the two, two types of math education. Rochelle Baborina is a leading Charlotte Mason curriculum researcher, developer, and publisher. Rochelle has published three Charlotte Mason style math curriculum books for grades one through three. Rochelle's curriculum has been very well received and is especially used in the Charlotte Mason homeschool community. Now I'll be showing you a sample from her book shortly, from book one. And here we are, books one, two, and three. Uh, so here are all three of Rochelle's latest books from her Charlotte Mason Elementary Arithmetic series, at least at the recording of this video. Uh, books one through three, along with the kit for book one. So let's zoom in to see this more closely. So here you can see books one, two, and three here on the, the left of her Elementary Arithmetic series. Um, and then here we have book one's kit. Um, you'll notice some everyday objects included in that kit, popsicle sticks, uh, some beads, some buttons, um, some things you might not have laying around the house would include these metal clasps, circular clasps, um, possibly this grid paper, but you could just actually find that online and print it out. You may not have quite that many pencils or popsicle sticks laying around. Um, yeah. So what's so great about these books and their kits is that Rochelle went to Ambleside, England, where Charlotte founded her teacher training center. And over 10 years, Rochelle researched Charlotte Mason's approach very carefully using the primary source content found at Ambleside and other English universities and implemented this research in her recently published curriculum. So, and I can imagine that she'll be publishing more of these books uh, in this same series sometime soon. So you'll want to keep an eye on that if you're interested in um, using Rochelle's arithmetic series. Now we come to unschool children. So unschool children choose a wide variety of math learning experiences, such as this child here, cutting out pieces of paper, uh, using colored pencils, they've got their scissors, they're using a book. Uh, presumably from the bi library. Um, so their math learning can include uh, math learning directly, indirectly through life experiences such as found through travel, online games, 
building, cooking, and a plethora of other hands-on projects. Unschooled children may seek direct math learning through math books, uh, curriculum, online math courses, and even playing school using curriculum and a whiteboard or a blackboard. Um, maybe you did that as a kid. I know as a kid, uh, my friends and I would pretend to play school and, and pretend to do math problems on the board. For optimal math exposure, it's important for unschooled parents to have a rich home learning environment well stocked with math games, living math storybooks, art supplies, interesting counting objects such as beans, shells, stones, beads, just like Charlotte Mason used in her math teaching. So this is where the two can actually dovetail together, uh, where there's a similarity. Um, both programs, uh, well, programs, maybe not the best word, or both philosophies utilize hands-on objects for math learning. Of course, with Unschool, it's um, maybe not every kid would choose hands-on objects, uh, but most kids do choose some type of um, hands-on learning regarding math. And I've even seen, I've even heard of one homeschool boy who loves counting and playing with colored paper clips. So that's pretty interesting. Now here is a sample of math curriculum from Rochelle Borina's Charlotte Mason Elementary book one. So let's have a zoom in here. So this is from the lesson on the number two from, uh, it is from the very first book. So it would be like for a kindergartner or preschooler even, depending on, um, you know, when your child starts. So the symbol for the idea, and these are instructions for the parent who would be the teacher. Um, number one, have your child point out two of some things in the room. That is those things that exist in twos or pairs, two eyes, two books, two shoes. Let her continue to point out as many as she wishes. Number two, next, draw a two on the slate so that she learns the symbol for the idea of two. So this is the parent drawing the number two on the slate, modeling how to draw it, how to write it. Number three, spread the number cards out on the table and have your child pick out all the twos from the group of figures. Number four, now it is your child's turn to learn to write the number two on her slate. Number five, finally have your child write the number two in her math notebook underneath the number one from the previous lesson. Now, continuing with this lesson on learning the number two, uh, let's go ahead and zoom in here. So simple sums with manipulatives, objects used, beans. Tip, though the term math manipulative was not utilized in Charlotte Mason's time, the use of concrete objects as aids in conveying ideas is significant in her philosophy of education. Number one, one bean and one bean make how many beans? So again, this is the parent asking the child the question. Tip, remember to require a fully worded answer. You may encourage this simply by asking why. So in Charlotte Mason's approach, it was very, accuracy was extremely important. Speaking in complete sentences, um, building on the idea of accuracy and, um, just real extreme clarity with mathematics. Number two, if I want two beans and I two beans and I only have one bean, how many more beans do I need? Number three, how many ones are there in two beans? Here now we come to our unschool curriculum example. Um, unschoolers may or may not choose to use curriculum, um, but here's an example of two child self-directed math projects done by two brothers, Josh and Kevin. So let's go ahead and, and zoom in. On the left, you can see that the brothers made these special mathematically shaped cookies called tessellations. Uh, and they share what tessellations are. So let's read it. And they said, we made tessellations out of cookies. Tessellations means tiling with the same shape and no gaps. Aren't those fun looking? And then on the right, the brothers made these fun fractal geometry cards. 
Fractals are a common pattern found repeatedly in nature that can be described as a branching of veined patterns such as is found in tree branches and leaves and the tubular systems of the respiratory, circulatory and nervous systems that make up human, uh, animal and plants, human bodies, uh, animal bodies and plants as well. Fractals are used in technology today, found in movie making and even in cell phone antenna. Very cool. Uh, now we have an example straight from John Holt's book uh, called How Children Learn. It's a very famous book. And I took a snippet here from chapter five, the chapter on art, math, and other things, page 107. And I believe the text is big enough. I won't zoom in here. Um, so unschooling math, uh, balance beam example. So he wrote, two years later, when I was teaching my own fifth grade, I borrowed some extra balance beams from Bill to see whether my students could make anything of them. I'm gonna zoom in here. I think it can be just a little bit bigger and I'll scoot over here. I put these beams and some weights to hang on them on a table at one end of my classroom. Then I had a piece of undeserved good luck before I had a chance to do any talking or explaining or instructing about these beams, some children came in early one morning and saw them. What's that stuff? They asked, they said. I said, oh, some junk I got from Bill Hall. And that was a co-teacher, another teacher in the school. They said, what's it for? I said, nothing special. Mess around with it if you want. Three or four of them went down to the end of the table and began to fool around. As other children arrived, they went down to watch. By half an hour later, almost all of the kids who had been working with the beams knew how to work them, including some who were not good students. I gave one of them one of the problems that had in earlier years given very able students so much trouble. She solved it easily and showed that she knew what she was doing. I said, you have any trouble figuring that out? And she said, oh no, it was cinchy. Interesting. All right, so this is an example of, you know, what you can do as if you choose to do unschooling math is, you know, get a balance beam or, or any kind of math tools and just lay them around the house and let your kids discover them on their own and see see what what comes of it you'll be surprised kids are born with an, a beautiful innate curiosity when they have enough time freedom of time uh, without being you know without being told what to learn they'll figure things out now both of these philosophies are beautiful i'm taking an unbiased view right here. <laughs> um, Charlotte Mace is, is incredible. John, uh, unschooling is incredible. Um, so, but let's talk about at this point, you may be wondering which approach is best for your homeschool. You can try each of them out one at a time, or you can even do a hybrid version combining both. You could do unschooling one, you know, maybe one day a week, Charlotte Mason two day, you know, whatever you want. Would you like to consider this third homeschool math option? It actually can be used with both Charlotte Mason as a supplement or as a resource guide to help you get started with unschooling math. All right, so introducing my quick read e-guide, Math Learning Secrets. Now in Math Learning Secrets, I help you release your family from math academic drudgery through fun and real life connections. I teach you how to set up a rich math learning environment and how to learn to see math everywhere around you. Math Learning Secrets complements any homeschool curriculum, including both a Charlotte Mason math curriculum and an unschooling math approach. So when you order Math Learning Secrets, you also get seven free bonuses helping you liberate your homeschool math from academic drudgery. So go ahead now, click the link for Math Learning Secrets in the description below, and I'm excited to see you on the inside. Awesome. Thanks for watching. Gloria Brooks here, founder of Nature Glows eScience.